I am posting this video for um, those of you who are believers in uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you, those of you that believe that um, God exists, that you um, believe that he created you, um, and that you are a created being meant to glorify him. And it's a, it's a word that I received from the Lord on January 20th that I feel like is so critical. And um, so I want to quickly um, give you a background on where I was at in the word when he spoke this to me. But I was in Second Chronicles and I was looking at the story of King Solomon. King Solomon is the son of David, um, which many of you I'm sure know the story of David and Goliath. And King Solomon um, built the temple to house the presence of God which is so incredible. But what's even more incredible is that now as believers, we get to house the presence of God. We get to encounter him. We have the mediator, Jesus Christ, who um, went before us and shed his blood and through his blood and through his sacrifice, we get to um, step into the presence of God um, and no, no longer need to have um, a building in order to encounter the father. But King Solomon builds this building and what's amazing about it is we see um, this beautiful act of worship in building the building. But then um, what we see is that King Solomon, then he kneels down in front of the entire community of Israel and he lifts his hands toward heaven. And then he says this beautiful prayer. And I would encourage you to open up today to Second Chronicles 6 and read the prayer and read the prophetic words that he speaks out because it's amazing. Um, but the part that I want to share that is so incredible, um, and if you're still watching, then I know that this message is definitely intended for you, um, is at, after he gets done praying, immediately it says, when Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. And then um, he begins worshiping and he falls down on the ground and he praises the Lord. He says, he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And then in that moment, King Solomon, he makes a sacrifice that is, I, I've read this before and I, it's never hit me in this way before, but it says, then the king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord and King Solomon, just King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. Now here's where the Lord prompted me to look this up. So um, cattle right now, on average, the cost of a cow is about $1,884. And the cost, is, the cost of a sheep, um, of sheep is uh, $300 to $400. And so the, the value today of 22,000 cattle is $41,448,000. And then the value of the sheep, the sacrifice of the sheep is $48 million, which is a total value of sacrifice of nearly $90 million, $89,448,000. Um, I mean, we're looking at almost $100 million that without hesitation, King Solomon threw it on the altar and it was handed over and surrendered to the Lord and it was burned up on the altar as a perfect and holy sacrifice to the Father. That was amazing to me. Number one, he knelt down as the leader in front of his entire community. He didn't just bow his head, although we see throughout scripture how important that is in worship, but he knelt down um, before the Lord with his hands up, prostrate before the Lord and had no shame and he was just fully surrendered to the Father as a leader. And then we see this beautiful um, uh, just act of worship and praise to the Lord the way he prays. And then he just hands over nearly $100 million in assets to the Father to be given over as a sacrifice. This isn't like a, um, I'm going to give something to the needy so I can get a tax deduction. This is a, a full-blown sacrifice to the father, everything on the line, handing it over to the Lord. And what the Lord was showing me in that is that um, we crave the kind of glory that King Solomon experienced in our life. We crave Shekinah glory in the Lord. We crave his presence to come down and to be with us. Whether you realize it or not, no matter how distracted you are, you were built for worship for the Father. You were created to glorify him. And I'm seeing even like at the close of the year, 
I'm seeing a lot of posts on Facebook about um, what an amazing year last year was in business or relationships or a lot of thank yous to past clients and um, especially from people that are believers. And um, this isn't coming from a place of judgment, just recognizing um, and being convicted of the fact that every single breath we breathe is because of the creator of the universe. So just the fact that I'm able to sit here and speak right now is because the Lord is giving me breath in my lungs and he's giving me the ability to speak. And um, oftentimes what happens is we end up working for our own glory. We say that we're doing things to better ourselves for the Lord or to be kind to other people or to have the assets to help other people. But really each and every day, what is your calendar built on? Is it built on the Lord's agenda? Is it built on glorifying God in everything that you do? Um, does it look like doing things that maybe aren't financially profitable because the Lord has asked you to do it? Does it look like setting aside what you're holding on to and instead taking all of that and surrendering it to the Lord and saying, this all belongs to you. You've given all of it to me. None of it is mine. Have your way in this. Um, we crave worship. We crave worshiping the Lord, but we are distracted by all the things of this world. We are distracted by vanity and career and relationships and kids. Um, all these things that are meant to be good and perfect gifts from the Father, but they easily become distractions and they easily become something that we place before the Lord. And then things get out of order and we feel it in our physical body and we feel it in our, in our mental health. Um, and instead of thinking about all the ways that you can better take care of you, think of all the ways that you can better rely on the Lord and that you can surrender everything to him, knowing that he has a perfect plan for you. And according to Romans 8, 28, he works all things out for the good of those that are called according to his purpose and that love him. And and work on building a relationship, a greater relationship with him each and every day and um, handing it all over. Handing it all over is a perfect sacrifice. You won't regret it. So God bless you. And if I can be praying for you, uh, reach out.